everybody thank you for joining me again this is the second part of my series on YouTube on boat fishing today we're going to talk about safety but what I'm also going to do I'm going to cover a couple of points that were picked up in comments uh, from the first video um, the first one is I forgot to show you a picture of me actually putting the boat in the water which might sound silly but it's still got to be done so thank you to the person who said you didn't put that on so hopefully now you'll better see the boat going in the water safely Another couple of comments that came up regarding the first video was uh, if you've got the boat and it's on roller bunks rather than a bunk like mine, uh, you definitely, definitely don't want to be taking the wind strap off before you get near the water because basically that water, that boat is held on by the wind strap. If you take the wind strap off, it will literally just roll straight backwards into water. So it's a good idea that you make sure that that is attached when you're on a roller bunk. Mine's okay at this moment in time because it's on bunks, so when I take the strap off, it just sits there. So, yeah, very, very valid point. Another point that came up by Mike was um, you should always take two, two, uh, two kill cords. This is quite important actually and I'd never really thought about it myself but it makes common sense. If I fall in the water and I've got a kill cord attached to myself, there's only one kill cord. So the person in the boat can't actually give you another kill cord. So it's a very, very valid point um, and I will address that. I've actually, I have actually got two keys. So what I might have to do is to put a spare key on the boat or leave it in the engine and leave one attached to myself. I'll, I'll find a way of doing it. But yeah, very, very, very valid point that from Mike. Uh, what else did he pick up? He also picked up on the fact that I take my boat off the trailer without the engine running, which um, again is a very valid point. I generally do. I generally take my boat off, then I start the engine. It makes sense if you start the engine while you're in the boat. But if you're on your own, I don't like the thought of my boat half in water with the engine and it's very shallow launches and then starting the engine, reversing the boat away from the trailer and then going, getting back out again. I personally prefer, it takes me such a little amount of time, I definitely prefer to bring my boat into the water, then start me and tie my boat up, uh, take my trailer away, then start my engine. But yeah, very, very valid point that, Mike. So today's video is mainly about safety. Um, it's it's a massive part of boat fishing. It's, it's dangerous and it can be dangerous and people have been killed fishing. Uh, a number of people have been killed fishing when uh, they've been on boats. So it's worth taking the precautions. What I'm going to run through today, I'm basically going to run through a standard day and what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Um, it's actually quite a dramatic video this one because I actually do a live rescue on camera, which is which you know, chance of getting that is unbelievable. But I did manage to uh, rescue a gentleman yesterday when we were fishing. Um, I also stopped to have a word with the lads uh, at the York Rescue. These guys basically go out, um, FOC, it's a charitable donation um, foundation, and they go out and they look after people basically. Uh, if there's a night out around Yorktown Centre and somebody falls in, which happens quite a lot because there's too many people drunk around Yorktown Centre, these guys are there 24 seven to be called out, go out and rescue these guys. Uh, not only that, but if a boat gets into trouble like myself, uh, then they can come out and rescue me as male as well. Now I've got to talk about these guys and I just mentioned to them that I'm doing this video and I said, have you got anything? I, I told them what I was going to do. I told them exactly what I said and they said to me, the only thing they could recommend is that if you do go in water, you go feet first, point yourself downstream feet first. So in other words, if you're in rapids or anything like that, the first thing you do it if you're going to be floating away or drifting away is that you're going to, your feet are going to go first. That's the only real thing. Everything else, they were quite happy with what I said. So hopefully this will, uh, this will be okay for them and those lads will get a link to this video as well so they can use it. Right, so on last video, I mentioned about kill cords and how important they are when, you go, when you're on boat. The reason you have a kill cord is to kill the engine. The reason why, if, if something happened, uh, on boat, so if we were going along uh, doing speed limit and you hit a log in water, what that's going to do is going to throw you forward. Now, last the, the worst scenario you'll ever have is me actually getting thrown out of boat because if I'm out of the boat, we're in trouble and I've got to get back in. 
it's always better if you've got two people on boat. Safety is really important, and if you've got two people on boat, it's really easy to sort out. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to replicate what happens if um, I'm going along and it's so on the speedboat up, and then I'm going to pull. I'm going to stand up and pull the kill, uh, kill cord out, and you'll see what happens. engine's dead so now engine will not start without that in there what that gives you a chance it gives you a chance to get your bearings if you've got it water it gives you a chance to get your be give your bearings see how you feel what happens if you if you do go in and you are panicking a little bit these are standard life jackets and what you need to do you need to pull this little yellow tab here when you pull that yellow tab it all inflates now these are the best life jackets and what I will say about life jackets is you're best spending as much as you can. I'm due to get some new ones, so I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna maybe wait until I go to Sweden and get a decent one. Um, these are inflate yourself. Now your only problem is if they're inflate yourself and you do fall over and you bang your head, it, it, you, you're in trouble. So if you can get an automatic one, what they call a hammer jacket, as soon as they hit water, they feel the moisture and they, they come up. Another good thing is a crotch strap. And what happens with crotch straps is they come underneath here and grab there. The problem is if this life jacket goes up. What it does, it comes around. It comes around here, and it can come up there. Now it's going to bring you up in the water, which is which is what you want. Which is going to give you a chance to get to the side, back to the boat. Now the biggest problem people have, um, if you go in the water, it's extremely cold. The most important thing you do is you do not panic. Cold water will kill you if you panic. So the best thing to do is to float. I know it sounds silly, but the best thing to do is to float first. Take a deep breath. Get in water. Take a deep breath. Get up to the surface, don't flap and panic, nice and steady. What kills most people is the first hit of the shock of the cold water. They take a deep breath in, take a load of water on board, then they panic, then they start flapping around, and that's when you die. If you look at any of the videos of any of the guys do a uh, special like out at sea, they say do not panic, float first, then get to the side of the boat. If somebody goes in the water, especially there's two of you, what you've also got to be very, very careful of is the boat capsizing, which might sound like a silly thing, but if you've got someone in the boat like I've got Drew today, which weighs about 12 stone wet through, he falls in the water, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go over and grab him, he's going to grab me. Now the problem is, if you can see now, the boat's listed straight away, you put a load of weight on there and you're in trouble. So the best thing to do is to step in the middle of the boat, grab his arm and pull him over that way. So you're not listing the boat. Last thing you want to do is somebody pulling down that way when you, when you're trying to pull them out. Either that or get them with the net. I know it sounds silly, but you can get them with the net. As soon as they've got all that net, you can move it backwards and pull it over this way. I've actually had a circumstance where a young lady were um, upstream and she'd been drinking at night time, stayed out with a boyfriend on bank, and she decided to swim across. Now this was mid-September, so water was quite cool. And what she did, she were she were going to drown. People who drown don't flap and flail their arms and start panicking. What they generally do is they're just they're treading water with their head, head just under, uh, just on the surface. If you speak to anybody or know anybody, who will tell you about drowning people. People who are drowning don't scream and shout. They literally they've lost all will and they're just going to go down. This girl was just on the surface. I'd come around the corner, noticed straight out of the water. We went over at side, me and Paul grabbed her, pulled her to the side of the boat, got her into the margin. So we didn't panic. We didn't try and drag her in. What we did, we just pulled her over to the side of margin where it were about six, seven foot. We got her into the boat there, got her right into the margin. I had a tin foil uh, wrap, which I've got in boat at all times with my first aid kit, which is again is really, really important. Wrapped her in the tin foil and she got there and she were in a bra and knickers, which is just so stupid. And she were over 30 foot of water there. Now, 30 foot of water might not seem a lot, but I'll tell you what, it's a lot colder than five foot water. So it's really, really important that you do that. Safety is paramount. You've got to be so, so careful. The other things you've got to remember when you're on boat, um, you always want a second, a second backup of your engine. So in other words, if your engine goes and you, you, you can't get anywhere, you're going to drift. Now, there's two ways you can do it. You should always have an anchor on boat. Now, I don't generally anchor at this time here, but if your engine goes or your engine fails or you, or you run out of fuel or something like that, you drop your anchor in, so you stay in the same position. You're not going to float off downstream. You're not going to float off and around a corner in a boat at you. If a boat comes around the corner and you're anchored up in the middle, of, in the middle of water and you've got problems with your engine, as long as you wave your arms and they'll have some sort of an idea that there's a problem, then they'll, they'll manoeuvre around you. Most people, if you've got a problem, will come up to you and say, well, okay, do you, do you need a lift back to the site? Can, can I take you back to launch? I've done that with quite a few people that's broken down before. So don't, don't worry and don't be scared to ask anybody. Um, Safety is paramount. You've got to look after yourself. 
please be careful. If you are fishing on your own, especially in winter, it makes sense to get yourself a flotation suit. Flotation suits are fantastic because what they do with a life jacket, even if you've got a life jacket in, you fall in the water and it automatically rights you and floats you. And it generally floats you on your back like that up to the surface, which is the best way. If you're head down in the water, you're in trouble. So what they do, you go in water, they're all full of foam and they lift you straight up to the surface. They are rated as well for weight as well. So make sure you buy a decent one. I've got a flayed one, which is really, really good. When I'm on my own in winter, I generally wear that. So again, you're thinking safety. You don't ever want to think an accident's gonna happen, but if you're prepared for it, then you've always got a, a, a way around it. Another important thing, when you're out on boat with someone who's quite new to it or has never been in boat before, is if you go in and they don't understand what's, to, what's going on with engine. So what I'm gonna do now, uh, Drew's been only out in a boat with me a couple of times, I'm just gonna explain how to start the engine, which might like, sound like a simple thing, but it's something they, need, they will need to know. If something goes wrong, if, say, if, say if I pass out or something goes wrong, I'm in boat and Drew's like, well, I don't have a clue how to start this engine, I don't know how to go. It's dead simple. You put that kill core back in, switch there, there's three gears, well there's three, there's, yeah there's three gears, forward, neutral and reverse. It will not start, the boat will not start in reverse or in, or in um, forward gear. So you need to make sure it's in central position. If you look on top of your engine it generally shows you there, R and F. And all you do, make sure your revs are off, steady, steady pull the engine and it just starts straight away. Then what you do, reverse backwards which is which, dead simple, neutral and then forward. It's as simple as that. But it's important that your person we go with needs to know that. If something goes wrong, then they can take over the boat and they can get you there. It's dead simple. Obviously, if you're going, if you're going right, you just push it left. And if you're going that way, you go that way. It's simple stuff like that. But if I don't show on video, then you never understand. Obviously, then you can pick up your revs. But a nice steady pace is the best way to do it. So you'll blur it. Right. Just been going about safety, someone's fallen in water, I need to get there really, really quickly and help him out. It looks like he's struggling a little bit, face down. I'm a little bit worried about his attire, but it just goes to show the importance of wearing life vests. It's okay pal, I'm coming for you. I've got you, hang on, just wait one second. No, just stay there, stay there, I've got you, I've got you, I've got you. I've got you. Come on son, get in here, go on, I've got you. As I said, pull him over this way, way across. You're all right there, son. Don't worry. Don't worry, we've got you here. It's my little mate. It's falling water. He's okay now. It's no need for mouth, mouth to mouth. By the way, he seems like he wants something, man. I'm holding him. I put my hands on his groin. <laughs> nice head. It's just looks like Simon Cowell, doesn't it? <laughs> Simon Cowell. <laughs> so, he's falling in there and I think he'll be okay now. Thank you very much, buddy, for rescuing me. It's okay, mate. It's okay. Anytime. Anytime. You can just sit there and just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride, fellas. Keep on the bit. Now, next part of this video is uh, some of it's another thing that's quite important when you're fishing on boat is you've got to get fishing to boat and you've got to be handling properly. Now, most of the time, I will I will handle and fish. And that's when you do it with, with fingers that's all cut up and stuff like that, like myself. Um, but this is part parcel of fishing unfortunately. If you're going to be catching a pike inside a boat, especially on the lure, you're going to have hooks. So you've got to be very, very careful what you do. These next couple of videos is a couple of uh, circumstances, a couple of different ones, is how I handle fish and how I bring them to boat and a safe way of handling them. Not when I say handling, I mean unhooking them rather than handling them. So these two next two videos will give you an idea exactly what I do and this is live so uh, anything can happen. Right, so just caught a fish here on the, on a jerk bait. And what we're going to do is we're not going to net it. We're going to bring the side of boat and land it beside the boat. I would say that ninety percent of all fish that I catch on on when I'm trolling up boat or casting off at boat, I land land. The reason is you don't want to save hooks in net. So what you do is not to panic about. Let it play itself out first. You don't want a fresh fish inside a boat. And what they do is they tend to tail walk quite a lot. So best thing to do is hold just above the trace. You got about a foot above trace. Now there's two ways of doing it, you can either un unhook it with a forceps down here and unhook it before it gets in or you can, you can actually physically handle it. So you can go up. It's a bad side actually, is that? 
that's a hand of reason. So I've done that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. So now I've got a gold hold of fish, there's no one to panic about. Just gotta be careful of any hooks hanging out, and what we'll do. Get inside there. Was that no messing about you don't want to keep out of water a long time you want to take a picture if it's a fairly decent one you do it that way all the time i'll ever really bring them into a net if it's something decent if it's something really really big last thing you want is fish to go nuts inside uh, when you've got it in your hand and this is a really really big fish so nine times out of ten bring them in like that pop it into water grab it by the tail and she just go straight off So, young Drew caught a fish here on his allowance, which is a nice, nice lure. Um, if, you, if you can see from up, it's just it's only just caught. So what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna do it slightly differently. I'm actually gonna unhook it in the water and not actually bring it into the boat at all. Same again, got a little line, about a foot above trace. Reason for that, if they do tail walk and you're too close to a trace, it can actually hook you. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna grab the shank of the hook. So, like that. Right, now what's happened, it's actually hooked by two points, one in top, one at bottom jaw, and one in top jaw. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to have to bring it in. So same again, just grab it. I've got the top one out first, this bottom one out first. All right, that way. It's as simple as that. Again, only a little small fish, but no better for its trauma. Again, pop it just in water. Grab it by the tail, and it should just go straight off. Like that. Job done. Sometimes you can have a bit of a shock when you're jigging for perch. Just jigging on a spot there for some perch and this beautiful little beauty come up and nailed it. Um, best thing to do is if you've, if you've got light tackle on, which I've got quite light braid there, I've got 10 pound braid, uh, 20 pound titanium trace. And best thing to do is back out the snags. So in other words, if you're fishing air snags, which you generally are when you're perch fishing, back out of it with boat, get into the middle of the river where you're in 18, 19 foot of water and you can play the fish out safely. If you go near the snags and it pulls you in there, you're not gonna get it out, it's on light like gear. So this one fell to a little flexi shad from American Tackle, which I should be able to pull out quite easily, but hopefully I'm knocking myself. There you go. Scrape it up, about 11, 12 or something like that. Nice fish, big fat head on it. Gonna be a bigger fish that in winter. Drop it off its side, grab a tail. Should go back quite nice and strong. Always give them a little bit of a rest when they're giving you a good scrap. Tail kicking now. Should go straight away. Once we hit that. Walla walla walla. Bit of blood, not wrong with that. Grand brew. That's it. We've come to the end of the second video now, which is all about safety. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a, a quite a laugh making it. And I've learned a few couple of stuff, like say, I spoke to the guys yesterday at the York Rescue. Um, not that, but they need a brand new fish finder. They've got an absolute garbage fish finder. But listen, they need an upgrade. So what we're going to probably do in, later in future is maybe do some sort of a charity day and get some money together for them. It'd be nice to end it there. They're there to help me and other people. So it'd be nice to give a little bit back. So I might just do something about that. Um, again, it, it, I've done this video for a reason. It's safety is paramount. And I know everybody goes on, oh, it's safety, oh, it's going to be a sore and take about safety. At the end of the day, no fish, no fish is worth dying for. And I see people on a regular basis, especially on the internet, especially on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, and other other um, forms of social media, I see people in boats fishing with no life jackets on. Now these people are the same people that when they go in, they're, they're in serious trouble. They're gonna die, or they could potentially die. But there's guys that have to go risk their lives to save them people. You, you've got a responsibility. At the end of the day, you've got a responsibility, not only to yourself, but also to your boat partner, to make sure everything is done to make them safe. I wouldn't want to go on a boat with somebody I don't feel safe with, and I won't get on a boat with anybody I don't feel safe with. So it's very, very important. If you're going to go out together, ideally go out together. Another thing a guy told me yesterday, one of the um, York Rescue guys, whenever you're going out, 
tell your spouse or tell your partner where you're going. Uh, again, it seems a simple thing, but if I if I go out and I, I have to change a plan and go to a different stretch of water, my wife thought I were going to A, a water and I go to B water, and then I have a problem and everybody goes searching on A water, then it, it, it just makes sense to let them know. Uh, you don't have to tell everybody on earth, you know, you've got to keep them a little bit quiet, but you've, you, at the end of the day, you've got responsibility again to let your spouse know or your partner and let them know where you're going and make sure that you're going to be safe and say you're going to be on for a certain time. I'm quite lucky, my wife is always on at me when I'm out fishing, saying, when you're coming home, when you're coming home, which, you know, it's annoying sometimes, but it's also quite endearing, and it, she knows that if I'm not home by a certain time, and especially if I'm not answering my phone, there's a problem. So again, she can maybe, she could always ring emergency services. The third part of this video um, is going to be about fishing, our favourite part of the boats. Uh, it's going to be running through uh, what I actually do on a day, uh, fish finding, I'm going to be doing some trolling, casting techniques, areas of fish, why I fish in these areas. Uh, it, this is going to be the hardest video to make to be honest with you because at the end of the day you've got to get the pie catch for feeding and on, on the munch. So if we get a couple of weeks of really heavy rain I could struggle to make this one. But trust me it'll be well worth watching. Hopefully you'll, uh, if you're new to it you'll learn a lot. If you're not new to it you might learn bits and bats. Um, and again please keep the comments coming in. I will try to react to them and I'll try and answer all your questions. So enjoy this video and I'll see you next time. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my daddy's video. Please subscribe and give it a big thumbs up.